Um, before I begin the um, the actual business, um, we're uh, frankly very concerned about a, a development here. Um, in the written exceptions, uh, the company says uh, in the introduction that uh, the rate levels and structure under the draft decision will continue this downward spiral in the company's ROE impair CNG's ability to provide safe and reliable service and require the company to cut jobs and investment capital. The draft holds the, the headcount constant at 340 positions. There's nothing in the draft that talks about cutting jobs. In the Hartford Current article on June 16th, Lynn Dome is quoting Robert Alessio, CNG's president and chief executive officer who said Monday that the DPUC's decision would, quote, make it even more difficult for CNG to attract capital in these challenging economic times and will in turn force CNG to significantly reduce expenditures and employees. At no point in the draft decision do we talk about reducing employees. We take a very dim view of, tra of trying these matters in the press. We did not begin this with a press release that pointed out the arrogance of the company to come here after extensive over earnings to ask for an even bigger rate increase at a time when the economy is crashing. And frankly, we will not be threatened. To the extent that the company wants to make these kinds of accusations, you better have something to say about it. If this matter were pending in front of the Superior Court, the company would be showing cause why it should not be held in contempt. Now, I don't possess the contempt power, much to my chagrin, but I do possess the power to economically punish the company, and I will do so. We're getting tired of this. This is the third occasion with different companies over the course of the last year where this authority has been threatened based on what the results of our decisions will be. And frankly, I find it a little amazing that the company is, is taking the position that if we don't provide the rate increase, they plan to do, deal with it by punishing their employees. So uh, this is an admonishment and a direct warning, not only to CNG, but to all the other regulated companies out there. This authority will no longer tolerate this kind of stuff. You're welcome to complain about the rate increase decision. You're welcome to complain about our logic. You're welcome to characterize it in any fashion you wish, as long as it's accurate. But we will not tolerate being threatened with economic dire results that are not called for in the draft decision. Does the company have a response on this matter? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm David Schwartz from Latham & Watkins on behalf of the company. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, just a very brief response. The focus of today's oral argument, we would like to focus on the merits of the decision, focus on that exclusively. Uh, with respect to your point, uh, the company has not made, we are informed that the company has not made any final decisions with respect to expenditures, expenses, or employees. Uh, and we take to heart your comments, Mr. Chairman, um, with respect to um, to employees and with respect to expenditures, uh, and we will we will consider those very seriously following the issuance of a final decision. So uh, I I apologize if if this is being interpreted as uh, as you had characterized as a threat, and certainly um, there has been no final decision that's been made with that regard. I think they have the power if they penalize their employees to tell them they're going to have to put them back to work. Mm -hmm. And would you care to comment? With uh, the chairman's discussion, in my opinion, you know, I've got a pretty thick skin. I spent a lot of years in politics, elected politics, and I've sat up here and been batted around by the best of them. But, you know, when you're going to start taking it out on your employees, that's the threat that you're going to start throwing around, that just doesn't wash here. I want to remind the company that while we are an agency that operates under the rule of law, and will be so in this case, and will operate on the basis of the evidence, we do have some interesting powers. And one of our interesting powers is that if we feel that the company is not handling its management responsibilities correctly, or if we feel 
that by cutting out a certain number of employees, it's jeopardizing the delivery of safe power to the ratepayers of the state of Connecticut, we can put those employees back to work. And in fact, we can add more employees. And then we can make this all about whether the managers of this company are going to manage. Because to me, that's what it is all about. Regulated companies are supposed to be managed by the people who are paid salaries from the ratepayers to manage those companies. They're not supposed to sit there and throw their, throw their employees under the bus every time something doesn't turn out the way they like it. So, if you want to focus on all the other stuff, that's great. But I would uh, strongly suggest that when you guys go back and reconnoiter about what's been going on over here, you pay a little bit of attention to the management of your employees and the powers we have to protect those employees from mismanagement or lack of management or management by press release, all of which we're not going to tolerate. <laughs>